Hi right, guys, today's video, I'm going to show you how you can replicate what you see here on the right of my screen, which is a bouncing ball and some floating text. So let's jump right into this tutorial. All right, so this is CodePen and uh, I have some HTML and CSS. So here is very basic. Uh, what I have, nothing much. I have a div with the class container and it has another div with the class image and the class box. And this contains an image, which is the ball that you see here, this green ball. And then you can see uh, I have another div, which is content. Uh, it has a class of content and a class of box. And that's what you see here. It has a heading, paragraph, and a button. Now, inside my CSS here, um, I've removed the margins from the body. And then I have some instructions uh, before uh, some selectors. Uh, which are for things that I'm going to add, the changes that I'm going to make in this video. So you can see that I have this container, it has a full width. Uh, I have this box here, which refers to that div. It has padding left and right here. And then I have this uh, ball uh, PNG. It has a width of 90%. Uh, that's why it's that's large on your screen. And then uh, I have this. Uh, the image selector and pay attention to this because that actually refers to this div here which has a class image so this is not um, an image itself it's a div actually and it has a, um, a background image and that background image is in fact a transparent image of a shadow a rounded shadow and that is what you see right here that's why you see that I have this ball a uh, green ball I have one uh, shadow here and then I have another shadow here uh, in the top left uh, area. Now that shadow is the background image of that div here, image box. But this second shadow that you see here, it belongs to the ball. This was one image. Um, the ball and that, and that shadow came together in one image. And if I scroll down, then I have um, uh, some fonts. Uh, settings. I have these keyframes which are for CSS animations and I will come back to them to explain uh, in more detail what they stand for. So uh, let me get started now. The first thing that I'm going to do is define my grids. So the container here has two divs uh, and I want to make these grid items. So I have to say display grids then I'm going to set them like uh, equal sizes. So I'm just going to say um, grids templates columns and i'm going to have one fr one fr i could use the repeat function here but i don't think that it's necessary because um you know the values are it's just two values so it's fine and then i want to align them um vertically now i could say align items center and then uh, justify items center and you can see the changes that happen uh, if I comment this out uh, look at the changes right so this uh, floating text especially you can see the changes but I could also use a shorthand property which you've not seen me use before and that is place item and it does the same thing as uh, justify items plus align items It's uh, like a shorthand property but it has poor browser support so I don't recommend that you use it I'm simply using it here because I want you guys to know that there is this property out there just in case all right so now uh, we're going to come down to this uh, ball PNG and I'm going to set that image uh, to a block element so display block and I want to center it horizontally. So I can now say margin zero, which means top and down, no margin, but left and right, auto. Okay, and now I can also um, add an animation. Now I like to um, set my properties in alphabetical order, but sometimes uh, I, don't always, I don't always follow that rule. So uh, I can say animations. Oh, I think it's animation, right? And the name of that animation is bouncing, I believe. Bouncing, yep. So I'm going to add bouncing. Uh, I want it to last two seconds. And I want the, um, uh, I want it to ease in and then out. And right. 
So I think that's it for that one. Oh, and I also want it to be infinite, not just once. If I leave it, you can see it's going to uh, bounce once and stop, but I want it to be infinite. So it keeps bouncing up and down. Now, um, I will fix that shadow effects, which is wrong at the moment. Uh, that shadow is supposed to be down as well and widen as the ball goes up and shrink as the ball comes down to create the effect that the ball is closer to the ground or whatever. So um, the next thing that I'm going to do is, oh, and I said I was going to um, explain to you. So why does this work? The uh, bouncing effect means at 50% of the animation, which is like one second, um, it should gain a 30 pixel padding at the top. So if I said, for instance, I want this to be 80 pixels, now look how far down it's going. Okay, I could have it to 100, and now it's really going down. Now I will explain why I'm applying the animation to the ball only, yet the text is also going up and down. I'll come back to that in a moment. But for now, um, I'm going to scroll down and come to that's div, which is uh, the image here with the class image. And I want to fix that background issue that I'm having here. So the first thing I'm going to do is control the background position. Because right now we have this background image. We have it set to no repeat, so it's only showing once. But I want to now set its position. So background position. And I don't want to use the shorthand uh, background property because I think it's going to be too long, the values. So I'm breaking them down to background image, background repeats, and now background position. Now background position, the value that I want is what I wrote here. And I want it to be um, set to 50% and 100%. All right, so it's, it's shifted a bit. We're second here by the X and Y um, axis. And then I want to uh, set the background size because you can't use width when you are dealing with um, backgrounds. You can use the width property. So you have to use background size. And I want the size to be 50, uh, sorry, 45% of the parent element. And now you can see that it's sort of merged with the, um, the ball's shadow. And like I said, I'm going to comment this out again. That first shadow that you see here, actually, let me comment out the uh, that background. Now, that shadow that you see here is part of that ball image. All of that, these two, are part of one transparent PNG. Now, I'm going to add this and the background size, fix it again. All right, so now that also needs an animation. And the animation I'm going to add here is this one, resize shadow. Now, keep in mind that these names that I'm giving, bouncing here, oops, sorry, yeah, uh, bouncing, and then this one here, Resize Shadow, are all custom names. I could name them any how I want, but I think giving them uh, meaningful names will help. Uh, that's just um, best practice. So again, I'm saying at 50% uh, of the animation, uh, the background size should go down to 40%. And the reason why I'm setting it down is because I want it to appear like um, the uh, shadow is getting smaller when the ball is closer or um, it's uh, it's getting down so that it's as if the ball is about to hit the ground and then when the ball goes up the shadow expands a little bit so i'm going to go back here and add the animation so animation and i'm i call this resize shadow i wanted to take two seconds I want it to ease in out. And the reason why I'm setting it to ease in out, I don't want it to be too linear. I want it to be a bit more realistic. All right, so again, if I just say it like that, it's gonna shrink once and then stop. But I want it to be infinite. So it's kind of like a bit subtle, uh, a subtle effect, but I think uh, it's more realistic. You can see if you pay close attention, uh, it expands, now it reduces, it expands again, and yeah. So this is the bouncing ball effect. Now we also have this floating text effect. And uh, if you look at the HTML here, that is a uh, content box, the div with the class content and the class box. And if you come here, 
you look at the CSS, I'm going to expand this again. If you look at the CSS box, we don't have any animation here. And I don't think we have anything for content either. We have, no, we don't have any uh, animation. So how come this is moving? Well, this, we can actually see what's going on if we open our DevTools in Chrome. Firefox can also um, show you what I'm about to demonstrate here. So I'm going to open this and I'm going to expand and now I'm going to click on content box. Now, let me reduce this a little bit. Right, so if I hover my mouse, right, so now my mouse is here. Pay attention to the dotted line uh, or the dashed lines that appear. These refer to the grid, and the reason why these are showing is because this container is having a display grid that you can see here. Uh, I don't know if you can really see it, it's right here. So I'm going to click on that, and now you can see if you check the lines. It's actually the grid items that are expanding. Because I'm adding padding to that one here, if you check the CSS, um, inside my keyframe here, I'm adding padding of 30 pixels. The grid item is becoming taller. But remember that in CSS grids, if one item, uh, if you have two sibling grid items, one of them goes down if they are both on the same row. If one of them expands in heights, uh, all of them will also expand. It's not like, uh, you know, like if you just have um, block elements or you're dealing with uh, floats, for instance, then you can have the trouble of, you know, uh, irregular height, etc. So in grids, all of them will also have um, every item in the same row will always have um, the same height, like they will share the same heights. So if I, I come here, let's say I wanted this to stop. I don't want the text to move then I could simply come back here to the top here I could either leave this and overwrite it or remove it I think I'm going to overwrite it in this case so I'm going to come here to box I could simply control the alignment by adding align uh, align self sorry not align items align self and have it set to start for instance now if it's at the start Let's check again inside of DevTools. Um, I'm clicking here. Although you can see that here the lines are going down, the content doesn't need to move anymore because no matter the height of that item, this uh, its content is always going to be clipped or attached to the top of the grid item. So we don't care whether the item is small in height or large or whatever, the content is always going to be at the top. Now, if I set this to end, however, it's going to be clipped to the um, bottom line, and therefore it has to move with the uh, with the line as well, with the bottom of the grid item, right? So you can see uh, the effects here, and the same thing applies uh, if we have it like by default center, then uh, it has to stay in the center, so it has to move as well. So it depends uh, how you like it. I'm going to remove that and let that uh, declaration to the job for me, place item center. Uh, but I like it that way, uh, floating. Anyway, uh, that's it uh, for this video. It's just a very quick effect. You can, of course, work on it and uh, make it better, like the shadow, maybe change color. Uh, as an exercise, maybe you can also do, um, like, um, add a blurry effect or gradients, etc. And if you do any of that, uh, please make sure that you share it, you share your work in the comment section, and I will just uh, like your comments and have a look at whatever you're doing uh, with CSS. So uh, if you like this video, please make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications in order not to miss uh, my upcoming tutorials and CSS tips and tricks, and I will see you next time. Bye.